So how do you use these genetic patterns to identify the crosses in word problems? Let's do some examples to see if we can actually figure this out. So let's see if the, uh, the question tells you there are two parents that look the same. And when they get together, they make children that look like this. One child looks unlike either of the parents. Two children actually look just like the parents. And then you have a third child that look like neither of the parents all right so we have two children that don't look like the parents and they don't look like each other and you have two children that look like the parents what kind of cross can possibly give you something like this well the first thing you have to realize is this is a one to one ratio of phenotypes right and so the only crosses that show something like this is crosses involving incomplete dominance or co-dominance now, in this case, it's not co-dominance because I don't have two looks at once. I only have one look at once. And so I'm talking about incomplete dominance here. What's happening? I have a parent, perhaps, that's big A, big little A, and a parent that's big A, little A. And then this is little A, little A, and therefore it looks recessive. This is big A, big A, and therefore it looks dominant. And they won't look like each other. And then the, both in the middle look like hybrids, which is a separate look from from the other two looks. And so you see how it is possible to solve problems if you know the patterns. What if they say there are two parents that look the same and make children that look, three children look like the parent, but the other child does not. So what is happening there? Well, again, you should recognize this is a three to one ratio of phenotypes. Which cross gives us something like that? Again, you should recognize just like this one is an F1 cross, you should recognize this is an F1 cross, but which F1 cross gives you this? A complete dominus F1 cross, so it's going to be the same thing, where these three here are basically like that. So you have two, <coughs> which are homozygous, homozygous uh, heterozygous, and then one, which is dominant, but the three of them all look dominant, because we're talking about complete dominance, and then one that looks recessive and is creating the different looks. So that's what's going on. Now, what if they say that you have two parents that look different from each other? So I am translating that into, into something that makes me sense out of it. And now these, these children will all look the same. What cross are we talking about? Well, the only cross that can possibly do like something like this is the is what the P cross because what's happening there is that you, you're getting a parent that perhaps is like this and a parent that perhaps is like this and making all children look like that and so and not so but what if you had something like this where you have one two parents that look the same that make children that look that look like neither of the parents so what's going on there it is the same cross but with incomplete dominance because you, what, what you get this time is the same thing you have a big a big a a little way a little way but once they mix you get an actual hybrid look right and a hybrid look which doesn't it's not the same look as either of the parents so you see how you can decipher these things like what, what's what about something like this where you have two parents two parents that look different from each other and when they mix two of the children look one way and two of the children look the other way. What kind of cross could create a pattern like this? Well, in this time, there's actually two possible answers because this could be big P, big P, mixing with big P, um, little P, in a condition of incomplete dominance because then this look is different from that look. And then this should be recognized as an F2 cross. How do I know? Every time you see a 50 to 50% ratio, you are talking about an F2 cross. Now, um, there's two F2 crosses that can create this, this condition. You can have an F2 cross, which has the test cross. So it could be the little p, little p with a big P, big P. And this look will be different from that look. And the children will match that ratio so you can get that. Or it could be this situation with incomplete dominance. Because if this was complete dominance, then in that case, everyone will look the same in the children. Which brings us to another point. What if they ask you a question like this? There are two parents that look the same. and they, Sorry, that doesn't look the same. There are two parents that look the same. 
So you have two parents that look the same, and they make children that all look the same. What cross is this? Be careful. You start to think about a true breeder cross. A true breeding cross is a cross where every time the children look like the parents. But you can't be sure because there are two ways of looking dominant. Remember that you can look dominant like this or you can look dominant like this. Either way, here, if you had something like that, this would be an F2 cross where the children would match those ratios. Two will be like that and two will be like that. And so you still have the same result that you would have if you had all big A's on both parents and children. And so you can't be sure unless that you get these children and cross them with themselves and do basically a self-cross or a task cross with those children to try to find out what's happening. Now let's actually try to do some genetics, uh, simple genetics problems and see if we can figure things out. You have, what are the chances of getting a child which is homozygous uh, dominant from a situation where you have two parents which are homo uh, heterozygous. Now you should recognize this as a cross between two things which are the same, right? But in this case they will all, they will make things that look one like three will look like one parent and one will look sorry three will look like the parents and one will not. We talked about this as an F1 cross, right? Sorry about that. As, as the, we talked about this as the F1 cross. Now, if this was incomplete dominance, you would get something else altogether. You would get something like that, and then you would have a tertiary look. That's the hybrid look. That would be the, something in between the both of them. So, but they're talking about the cha chances of just a genotype here. That's what they're talking about. So you don't have to complicate yourself with phenotypes. And basically, you realize this is an F1 cross because you recognize this as a cross between hybrids. And so you know that in a cross between hybrids, the chances of this is one quarter. If you memorize that, if you don't memorize, you're gonna do a Punnett square. Now, what if they say, I'm gonna cross a homozygous recessive with a, a hybrid, what are the chances of getting a homozygous dominant? So they're saying you're gonna, you're gonna cross a homozygous recessive with a hybrid. Now, before you do anything else, you should already recognize what the cross is and they want a homozygous dominant. Now, what kind of thing is happening here? You should recognize this is a true, a pure, a true breeder being mixed with a hybrid, right? Or a heterozygous being mixed with a homozygous. This is automatically, you should recognize that as an F2 cross. In an F2 cross, half the children will look like one parent, half the children will look like the other parent. So no children can look like this because this looks like neither of the parents, not looks, sorry, it doesn't match the genotype like of either of the parents. So you're never going to get that. Now, sometimes they'll give you phenotype problems. For example, they will say you have two heterozygouses which are mixing. How many children will look like the parents? So this time you can get you can get you can get it tricked because if they say look like the parents, it makes you answer this, right? Which would be in this case one half. Because this is an F1 cross where half the people that come out just like the parents, genotype wise. But they're not asking the genotype if they say look. They're asking that the phenotype, because the phenotype is the look. But remember, if this is complete dominance, and you have to ask if it's complete dominance, but if it is complete dominance, this big A, big A will also look the same as this will. And therefore, you have to add another quarter to these chances. And so what you have here is a situation of or. And we talked about this when we did the genetics problems. You have to add those chances for a total of three quarters chance of that happening. So be careful with questions that ask you, to, that ask you about look like the parents. And what if you're actually doing now something like a, a, a trihybrid cross? This will show up sometimes, and so I'm going to make sure you understand how to do this. So let's say you have two parents like this. So, and this, these are all capitals, and that's the only lowercase. Now, if I was actually doing this hybrid cross, I would have to, this is three different types of hybrids, so it's two to the power of three to find out how many gametes I would need. This would be eight gametes 
times, in this case I only have one hybrid, so it's 2 to the power of 1, which is 2 hybrids. So I would have to do a Punnett square that has 2 boxes like this, right? So it has 2 boxes like that, and then it will have to have... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You would have to have eight uh, columns because of the, the gametes over there. But what I'm trying to tell you is that don't do this point of square altogether. Think of this as independent assortment and look at the traits separately. We did this in another video, but I'm going to show you how to do that again. Recognize that th that you can cross each one of them separately. So you can go big A times big A, big A. Or just visualize that this is the cross that you're doing. You're crossing these two things. So that is a cross between a pure and a hybrid. You're talking about a F2 cross. In an F2 cross, what are the chances? Let's say you want to ask, what are the chances of getting a completely purebred organism? So what are the chances of being like either one of the parents? That would be one half. But then you have independent assortment. So you have independent events. So that means and so that means you're going to multiply the chance of the second one. So you're going to get big B, little b versus big B, little b, big B. That's another F2 cross between a hybrid and a pure. The chances of getting a pure that matches one of the parents is, again, one half. Now, the last one, you have a dot, uh, F, F1 cross because you have two hybrids crossing. So that's an F1 cross. The chances of getting something that's a, a homozygous dominant is one quarter. One quarter. Now you have to multiply the chances. 2 times 2 is 4, times 4 is 16. The chances is 1 out of 16. That means if you were to actually do this entire Punnett square with two rows and eight columns, only one of these things somewhere would be what you wanted. So you would have wasted all your time to create this Punnett square just to find one box that satisfied your, your um, desire. And so in this case, it's much faster to do an actual um, probability thing. And so that's why to do dihybrid crosses, always try to do probability. And see, solving these genetics problems can be challenging, and we're going to be doing lots of this in class when we go to level four. But if you memorize the ratios of the crosses, you're going to be fine. And so the most important things to know, the most important things to know is that whenever you hear everybody is the same they're talking about a true breeding cross it is the only cross that parents and children are all the same another one that's important is whenever they mention something like a three to one ratio of phenotype they're talking about an f1 complete dominance cross if they talk about a one two one uh genotype so if they talk about one to one, this was this this was three to one phenotype. If about one to one genotype, they're also talking about an F one cross. All right. If they talk about one to one phenotype, this is also going to be an F one cross, but it could be incomplete dominance or co dominance. So you have to watch out for that. Okay. If they talk about. Uh, one-to-one -one ratios or 50-50 ratios, you immediately jump to the conclusion that it's an F2 cross that they're talking about. It's a cross between, a, uh, uh, all right? So these patterns are things you're supposed to know. So memorize. If they're talking about everybody is the same, all the children are the same, it could be either the true breeding cross, an F2 dominant cross, or a P cross. But, so, but if they say the parents are different and the children are the same, that has to be the P cross because that's the only cross where parents are going to be different like that but the children are all going to be the same and if it's a complete dominance they're going to look like that parent but if it's incomplete dominance or co-dominance this is going to be a new look right uh, another thing they need to be able to recognize is that true breeding crosses are always between two of True breeders, so it will be something like this, right? So while um, your P cross is will be something like that between two different true breeders, a cross between hybrids is automatically your F1 cross. In any cross between a hybrid and a pure, 
is going to be an F2 cross, and there's two versions of that, right? And this one is called the dominance cross, and everybody looks the same in the children, unless it's incomplete dominance or co-dominance. And this one is the F2 cross, which can be used as a test cross. If you know these patterns, you're going to be in good shape. Good luck with genetics.